Welcome in. It is day 85, and you're speaking with the Meeples Champion. And we are on our third day of October. You may notice I'm kind of alternating my shirts a little bit, black and then orange. Black, gonna be orange again tomorrow. Just going with a little bit of a Halloween dress theme for this month as well. So today, we're gonna be jumping into another game. And it's a small, newer game. It's two-player specific. And I no longer have the box for this game. This is one of the games that I whittled down and put into my small game cartridge area. So we're gonna be talking about Jekyll versus Hyde. So Jekyll versus Hyde is a really cool new game. I first got to try this game because it was released on the um, board game arena. And I played it quite a few times, but it wasn't actually out yet to buy. And the instant it came out, I picked it up and had it come in the mail. The concept of the game is it's a trick taking. But it is a two-player trick-taking, which I thought was extremely different. One of you plays Jekyll, one of you plays Hyde. You play the game over three rounds, but it can end in rounds one or two. It doesn't have to go the whole three. The idea is that you are trying to get from the center of the board to either the left or the right, if you are playing Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde's trying to force you to be so extreme to one side or the other that you change. Whereas Dr. Jekyll is trying to maintain his sanity. So you've got 10 total spots and you've got three suits. There's a, I believe it's green, purple. I want to say the last suit is blue. Um, and the concept is you're going to shuffle these suits up you're going to deal out cards to each player, not all the cards. And then, starting with one player, you're going to lead off with a card. Now, just like most trick-takings, the other player now has to play the same suit if they have it. And when they play that card, it is going to then be decided if it goes, you know, based on whoever has the higher card, to the left or the right, is it you or is it them? Well, when you play a card, what's interesting is there's also a piece up top and this is a determining factor in what cards are going to be the trump cards so if you start off with a red red gets placed in there first red is the weakest of the suits so now if somebody plays a red and the other person doesn't have red and they play any other color it is stronger than red and then when the next color is played that gets suited in and that now means that green say gets gets in there next well it's a trump to red but the last one, blue, is a trump to green and red. So you're trying to be very aware of your cards and say, what can I play to make sure that I'm going to get what I'm going for? Now, if you're Dr. Jekyll, what you're going for is you're trying to win as close to half of the suits as you can. You have the possibility, because there'll be 10 cards dealt out to everybody, five total. So you have the possibility, is that right? Actually, it might be more than that. It might be 10 total. You have the possibility that you're going to end up going half and half and stay right in the center. And if you do that, that's a perfect round for Dr. Jekyll. So Dr. Jekyll, when he wins two or three in a row, is like, I need to start losing. So he's got to make sure to maintain that. Whereas Mr. Hyde is trying to win it all or lose it all. So he's trying to sabotage himself or sabotage you by making sure that either he has a crazy strong hand or a crazy weak hand. If at any point, at the end of the round, when you're counting up all your tricks, for every trick that's off, you're going to move your piece. So you've got to get this piece 10 spots. If at any point you hit the 10 spot, it's done. You have transformed into Mr. Hyde and Mr. Hyde wins the game. But if at the end of three rounds, Dr. Jekyll was able to maintain and keep you from the 10, then Dr. Jekyll wins and he's maintained his sanity. So it's a long game for Dr. Jekyll. It can be possibly a long game, but also possibly a short game for Mr. Hyde. It's really easy. It's very simple. It is not long. The game takes probably 10, maybe 15 minutes total. It's not very long per round. 
and you also have potions in there and the potions can be played as kind of like wild cards they can defeat other cards but these also each have abilities which will be activated based on what the other person played so let's say the other person played a red and then you play your potion well you're going to get the red's ability which one of the abilities is going to wipe out the things from up top meaning hey we had it as red was the strongest and green was the second and blue was the top but we just played this one and it activated red's ability and now all of these come off and nobody has a trump anymore or another one might say that when you play it you're now going to exchange a card with each other so there's abilities that come with this game it's really interesting but why don't we jump in and actually talk about our seven categories category one <laughs> Now, I don't have the box here, but the box is really nice. I was very sad that I couldn't fit the box in here. It was a tight squeeze and it just wouldn't shut. And as a person who has a very large collection and I don't want to have to cull games, I made the choice to cull boxes to put these in here to really reduce what was going on my shelf, which is off to the side here, for my smaller games that was maxed. So instead, I could commit to getting these into my, my small holders that hold right now roughly 40 games of mine in a very tight space. But I will put up a picture for the entrance of this video, as well as I'll try to put one in this general area if I can, showing off the box and letting everybody see what that looks like. The pieces inside also are really nice. I feel the art sells the theme of it being a darker game, of it being about, you know, this, this person kind of their sanity. Uh, I think it's a really good job. It's a thumbs up. come down to the board which is pretty small the cards and then the cardboard markers which will represent your three different suits as well as your nice standee for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde which moves on the board uh, it's all really top quality it's very well done it's a smaller game that knew that it wanted to make sure that this game was a good quality did a great job thumbs up <laughs> A smaller game that is a little bit more expensive it's about twenty dollars usually when i'm talking about games that end up in these we're talking about that 10 to 15 dollar range but this one did go all in to make sure its quality of pieces was very high that little standee i'm talking about it's not it's not like it's a little miniature plastic it is a full head with a hat on it metal piece it's heavy you know but it's great and it works for the game fantastic and i think that their pieces are so well done I'm not worried about wear and tear. So for 20 bucks, getting a two-player game like this with really good quality when it comes to its components, I think that it's worth it. It's a thumbs up for me. This is not a difficult game. It's very straightforward. If you played any trick-taking, you already know how to play it, essentially. You just have to master that difference between trying to go 50-50 or trying to go 0 to 100. And other than that, I mean, it's just three rounds. There's not a lot to learn here. There's plenty of game when it comes to trying to mess with each other or know what the other person's like thinking, how they might have strategized their deck based on, well, I can eliminate the cards I have, but I don't know what they have because there's more left and there's cards to the side and I don't know what they are. So trying to figure out what they may have, trying to figure out what they may have positioned themselves at, that's, that's the real difficulty and I feel like that's not that difficult so it's a thumbs up on difficulty this game does not take too long this is a game that you're going to play out in probably about 20 minutes it could take 30 but I think about 20 minutes and it's one that you can play multiple times in a row it's not a game that you're going to play at once and be like all right that was an experience I'm done most of the time, it's like, I want to play as Hyde, and then I want to play as Dr. Jekyll. And so you want at least two plays. And it's the kind of game that, yes, I'm going to pull this out a bunch in the month of October because it's an October-themed type game. But I can pull this out year-round. When we were playing on Board Game Arena to learn it, me and my friend played this game loads of times. And then I ended up introducing it to one of our other friends from the group, and me and him played it a bunch. It tended to be that if I was on and somebody else popped in and we were getting ready for our get-together for our night of game that the first two of us who showed up would just pull this and start playing because we knew it was going to take a bit for the other three to get there. So even if somebody showed up, they could watch the game until the others were there and then we'd be like, okay, well, let's jump into that. 
So big thumbs up on that, on that replayability. Keys to victory are, as I've said in the past, it's, it's up to what the game produces and tells you it's going to do. And this game does not have an unfair advantage to any particular type of key to victory. If you're playing as Dr. Jekyll, it's all about trying to figure out how to take advantage of your hand. So even if your hand tends to be, oh no, I got all of the reds. Okay, you may have gotten all of the reds, but you guarantee you're going to start the game with one of your wilds. That's going to give you an opportunity to cause some kind of change. And you can come out and you can try and figure out, is there a way for me to switch some cards? Is there a way for me to, to make sure that I use the red early, but I, I exchange it? You know, if they're going to lead off with green, for instance, if you're first, then hey, now at least I have a card that's going to end up being a trump card. You've got to try to take advantage of that trump, and you've got to take advantage of that hand formation and figure out how to attack with it. But it's there. And then when you're playing as... Mr. Hyde, you're playing with the same exact concept, only now you're trying to, instead of going 50-50, go all in. So you've got to do the same thing, but figure out how to push yourself all the way to a win, all the way to a loss, and understand how to ride that same idea. How do I put together my hand? What am I going to do when it comes to the wilds? And what am I going to do when it comes to figuring out which one should be Trump? It's an interesting attack on these, but I think that it definitely has plenty of keys to victory and nothing overrides everything else. Thumbs up. I have never played a two-player specific trick-taking game before. I love trick-taking games. It is one of my favorite style of game. And I really like the concept of, all right, I'm going to play a two-player version. Now, I reviewed way back at the beginning of my channel, Scheming and Skulking, one of my favorite trick-taking games ever. That does have two-player, but that is a two-to-six-player game. That's very different. When you're playing two-player in that, the game is not as good, in my opinion, as six player, but it's still fun. And it plays a basic type of trick taking style. This one has multiple people you're playing as. So depending on that side, because it's two player and it allows that option for player A or player B, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, it's totally different play styles. And I really like how this game came together. I think its theme is something I haven't seen before. I, I'm sure it does, but I can't think of another Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde game. And I can't think of another two-player trick-taking game, and I definitely can't think of anything that comes close to the experience that I get from this. So it's a big thumbs up. Overall, what do I think of this game? I think this game is extremely fun. I do think that if you're a trick-taking fan, buy it on the spot. If you're a fan of smaller games or games that are just going to take like under 30 minutes, buy it on the spot. But if you tend to be a bigger gamer, and you don't mind playing some small games, they're just not your big thing, try and see if there's a way to go play it. Go go play on Board Game Arena and play out a few rounds and see if it hits for you. Figure out if it's there for you before you buy it, because it is $20. It's not a bad amount of money, but it isn't like when I recommend to just go pick up a $12 game. Make sure that it's at least something you think you'd be interested in trying. Make sure you get an experience of it and that you feel like the gameplay is fun, and then put it in your collection. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't get played most of the year, Maybe you still have yourself an October game that you can pull out and enjoy a little Halloween theme for. Well, that's just my opinion. It's up to you guys to get out there, try the games, see what your opinion ends up being, and see if it's something that you're interested in playing or possibly interested in buying. Well, it has been day 85. We've been talking about Jekyll versus Hyde, and you've been speaking to the Meeples champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description where I'll be adding in an Amazon link in case you want to pick this game up for yourself. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.